Hello everyone. So welcome you all to Ashok Tutorials Megalize First Empted Channel. So my dear friends, in this video we are going to see Child Development in Pedagogy Unit 4. The topic will be the methods, methods of child study, right? So today we will be studying cross-sectional method, longitudinal method and case study. Alright, let's see. So what do we mean by cross-sectional studies? Definition, cross-sectional studies involve observing and analyzing different groups of individuals at one point in time. These groups often vary based on age, gender or other relevant factors. Now you see, when you are studying the children, right? When you are studying a group of children, maybe 10 students, 6 students, 100 students, then you are studying them at one time, right? Many individuals, you are studying them at one time not different different times suppose it is not like you will study uh, six children on monday again you will study the same six children on tuesday it's not like that suppose if you are studying in this year 2025 then you'll study only this year all right about that children or if you study today that is monday then you will study about those children only in monday at the same point of time all right so this is the difference so you will come to know as we continue with our longitudinal method of study. So now, first of all, you understand what is cross-sectional. So cross-sectional means you are studying different groups of individuals, but at one time. This is the difference. This point is very important to remember. When we say cross-sectional study means studying different groups of individuals can be age groups. And these groups might vary because of age or because of gender or other relevant factors all right so just remember many individuals at one time that is cross-sectional study what are the features data is collected at a single time so when you are studying the children through cross-sectional study you are collecting the data at one time it is not like on monday you will collect data again you will observe and collect on tuesday also then friday also it's not like that you are collecting the data at one time. That is Monday means Monday, Tuesday means Tuesday, January means January, December means December. It's like that at one time. Now, compares different groups to draw conclusions about trends or differences. Now, you know, different groups of individuals can be compared together and the differences or the conclusions can be found out. As I give you example, you will understand it in a better way. Don't worry. Number three. Quick and cost effective compared to longitudinal studies. Now, this cross sectional method is quick, it is very fast, right? You can do it very fast, it, it is not time consuming and it is cost effective. Cost effective means what? It is very, very reasonable or cheap. In normal layman term, you can say is that it is cheap, it is not so costly. This process is not so costly. When you want to study a child through cross sectional method, it is very, very fast and very, very you know reasonable or cheap to study as compared to the longitudinal studies so longitudinal might be time consuming and might be even costly so we will see that later on now does not track changes over time and you know you don't have to study a chi child over time it is not like cross-sectional study is not like you will observe the child in december again you will observe the child in january again you will observe the child in november it's not like that it is at one time, right? At one time study. If we talk about example, so imagine you want to understand the reading habits of children of different ages. Suppose you want to study the reading habits of different children. You survey six year old child, right? You, you are surveying children of six years age. You are surveying on children of 10 years of age and you are surveying on children of 14 years of age but at the same time to compare their reading habits so as you know we have children of different group in class 5 in 6 in 7 in 8 in 19 suppose you have taken children of 6 years from class 5 then 10 years from class 6 and 14 years from class 9 and you want to study them together because you want to compare what is the reading habits they are following right so this type of study is called as what cross-sectional study which means you will take children but of the different ages right and you will find the conclusion or you will try to study them at the same time by comparing them all right 
A finding could be that 14 year old read more complex books than 6 year olds. Now, your findings you can conclude you might conclude that the children who are 14 years they like to read more complex books or they like to read the books which are very difficult to read right so this is the conclusion you can make when you study children of different age groups at the same time by cross-sectional method so this is one of the way in which you can study the children right now let us see longitudinal studies Longitudinal studies observe and collect data from the same group of individuals over an extended period of time. So, in longitudinal studies, what happens is that you will observe, right? You will observe and you will collect the data from the same group, same group of individuals, not different groups, same group of individuals, but over extended period of time, which means that you might collect the data on Monday, then again on Friday, then again on Tuesday, then again on Thursday, then again on Saturday. Or you might collect the data in January, then in June, then in November, then in December, right? So it is opposite to cross-sectional study. In cross-sectional study, you collect the data at the same time. In longitudinal study, you collect the data, you collect the data at different time intervals, right? Or extended period of time. I hope you're understanding the difference between the two. But those, but both these methods are the methods of child study now what are the features tracks changes in development over time so in longitudinal study you will observe the children over time you might observe how they prepare or what is the outcome or what is the result we get when the children perform in pre-test in class test in mock test in half yearly in annual exams right so you might observe in different phases of time so this is what this is an example of longitudinal study helps identify cause and effect relationship and this longitudinal study helps you to identify what might be the cause and what are the effects that cause is having on the children that their performance is this way now it requires a significant time and resource commitment you know as we have seen in cross-sectional study that cross-sectional study is less time consuming right we have seen it does not take much time but longitudinal study takes time it takes time and resource commitment or you can say it is a bit of bit costly as compared to cross-sectional study risk include participant dropout now when you are studying the child suppose in january during admission there are 60 students but again in june some of them they fail or they are detained and they leave the school and only 30 students are left so when the students are leaving the school or they are drop out that will affect your study that will affect your longitudinal study of child right example example given here are you are studying how vocabulary grows in children what is a vocabulary vocabulary means what is your word power the same word we can say differently right suppose if i want to say very good i can say it very good or I can say it excellent, or I can say it's superb, or I can say it great, right? So these are the way I can use different words for the same meaning. So vocabulary means how strong your in, uh, how strong your language skill is, or how many words you know. So suppose you are studying how vocabulary grows in children. So we know that when we are child of class one, two, we don't speak hi-fi English, right? But when we go to class five. We have little more improvement when we go to class 9 we speak we speak more then again when we go to class 10 and 12 we are able to speak fluent excellent language be it english hindi garo khasi miso nepali as as bengali anything right now how do you study a child through longitudinal method so you start with a group of five year olds and test their vocabularies as i give you the example you can take the example of five year old child and you can test his or her vocabulary like what are the language what are the words she can speak now teach the same children at the ages of seven eight and nine seven nine and eleven now you have tested a child's vocabulary when she was five years and again you test her vocabulary when she is seven years then again when she is nine years and again when she is 11 years so of course you will observe that when as she is growing older and older by the age of 11 she can speak a lot and a very in a very good manner as compared to when she was five and the vocabulary she has right 
you observe that exposure to storytelling at home has a consistent positive impact on vocabulary growth. So, of course, we know that there are certain means and certain ways by which we can improve our vocabulary, right? By storytelling, by reading, by listening to, by reading. So, when you are telling a story or when you are reading, so these things will improve what? These things will improve your vocabulary and when you are a fan of dictionary you like to discover new new words you like to learn one new word every day so these things increases your vocabulary right so now let us come to case studies definition case studies involve an in-depth investigation of an individual groups or specific situation to explore complex issues in details now see there are different methods of child study right it can be naturalistic observation participant observation, cross-sectional study, longitudinal study, right? And here, case study. Now, how case study is different? So, case study means you will pick up a specific case. Suppose you want to know in your school why the children always fail in mathematics. So, this is a special case where you can select one individual or where you can select a group of individuals who have bad marks in mathematics and you can you know do in-depth study you check their classwork copy you check their homework copy you read about their study habits you read about their uh, peers you read about their friends you read about their families friends and you go to their house and ask the parents how much time he or she is spending what is the problem how are you are you as parents being supportive and cooperative to the child so these things the researcher or the teacher can go and find out this is just an example right but case study can also mean that as you can see fire all across the world in los angeles right in los angeles you can see the fire is going on right so there what is the cause of the fire why the fire is caused is it a natural cause or there is any political cause behind this so all these things you will do research and you will find out and this will also be known as a case study case study means studying about a specific topic but in a detailed way now what are the features focus is on a single subject or a small group so when we do a case study we may select a topic like zoom cultivation we want to know about the zoom cultivation in meghalaya what are the pros and cons what are the effects causes now or we can select a small group of class 6 boys or class 10 boys and we, we want to study how they take care of their health. So it can be anything you like, provides rich qualitative data. So when you are doing a research or when you are doing a case study, you will get a very, very valuable, authentic, rich quality data. So the data you are collecting from case or from your participant from your students or from anybody that will be very very informative and have a high quality where you can trust it right often uses interviews observation and historical records so when we are doing a case study we might take the interview of the subject we may observe the subject or we may even go and check the past records of that particular subject or the student or the group of individuals Findings may not always be generalizable to a larger population. Of course, when we are doing a case study, we cannot say this is applicable to everyone in this world. Case study means selecting a small group or small individual or a single individual, right? So it can, you cannot say that, suppose you are doing a case study on Virat Kohli. So you cannot say all the cricketers in the world, they, you know, they drink this costly water. Say that. Or suppose if you do a case study, on Isaac Newton so it does not mean that to everybody's head whenever apple falls they would have behaved as or they would have responded as Isaac Newton did not necessary right because you are studying only a small subject so that's why case study is not generalizable so what example can we see a teacher notices that one child in a class struggles with reading despite being bright in other areas. So suppose here example is given, right? A case study example is given. Suppose you observe that there is a child in your class. Her name is Naira. So you see that Naira 
she is very expert very brilliant in all the other spheres or all the other areas she is brilliant in different areas of her study however she struggles with reading so you conduct a case study on naira you interview the child you interview the child's parents and you observe the child during reading activities in the classroom outside the classroom at home you are observing right and then you review the school history of the child how regularly the child is coming how much participation she is putting in different co-scholastic and non-scholastic areas co-curricular activities all this you will find out then at the end of the day you might discover that she the child has dyslexia right you may discover that the child have dyslexia problem and that's why she is not able to read as a normal child would have read now when you hear the word dyslexia many things might come into your mind like what is this how it is what how like what is this particular disability so these things i will explain as we go on and on because dyslexia then dyscalculia dysgraphia these things will come in the later on in different units so let us do a comparison between the three methods of child study that is cross sectional study longitudinal study and case studies so focus now cross sectional study focuses on groups at one time groups at one point in time so cross sectional study we focus on group of individuals but at a single time in longitudinal study same group it might be but over different time as i have given you the example in case studies in depth analysis of one case so in case study we study the single individual or single group of individual or single event but in details now data collection in cross sectional study the data collection is single time point in longitudinal study method it is multiple time they can collect in january december march like that and in case study it is very very large comprehensive data can be collected time so cross sectional study takes short time longitudinal study as the word says longitudinal so it takes long time and case study can be short time taking more time taking or average time taking it depends example of cross sectional studies reading habits across ages so as we have seen class 6 class 9 class 10 students or a single child when she is in at the age of 5 how she reads at the age of 6 how she reads at the age of 10 how she reads so reading habits across ages so you will see that how children of different age like 6 years 10 years 14 years 15 years how much interest they have on the reading and what type of book they like to read but when we talk about longitudinal method of study vocabulary growth in children so here we see a small child who is 6 years old how much vocabulary she has then 10, when she is 10 how much vocabulary she has then when she is 15 how much vocabulary she has so this is longitudinal way of study now and when we talk about case study identifying dyslexia in a child so how case study can be like if like you know the best example is tare zameen par movie you have seen no so in that case ishan avesti is suffering from dyslexia right he has the problem in reading right you see that he cannot read or he cannot write he is misplacing b and d the shape of b and d he is misplacing right he don't understand how to write b how to write d so that is an example of dyslexia so as teachers i highly recommend that you all go and watch the movie tare zameen par where you will get to learn a lot so whatever amir khan did in that movie that is called a case study all right that is the best example of case study i can give so this is all in this video so thank you everyone for staying connected with the show tutorials mega as first empty channel thank you